Hi everyone, today we are talking about Delta stock or Delta airline stock and we'll be taking a look at this stock and seeing if it's a buying opportunity right now as it's at $24. And I think the whole airline space and the cruise space has been like the two star attractions over the last kind of two or three weeks with what's going on in the stock market because of what's happening in the world and the stock market. These kind of two industries are the two most, I think, searched and talked about because there's some really opportunities that are starting to appear in these kind of industries. So we'll take a look at Delta Airlines stock today and I'm gonna give my opinion if I think the stock's a buy and if I'm gonna buy any, any shares in the company. And as always guys, if you smash that like button, that'd be absolutely amazing. And we'll take a look and see if Delta Airlines stock is a buy right now. So Delta Airlines stock, ticker symbol DAL, is now priced at about $24 as of recording this video. We're gonna cover the chart, the P, the EPS, revenue balance sheet, and the bailout possibility with the cause of what's happening on with the dividend. And of course, we'll talk about the insiders and Warren Buffett, because that's one of the things that's moved the stock over the last week. So Delta Airlines stock $24, it pretty much has halved recently. That's a big, massive drop in any sort of stock when it drops that much. And a few people are now looking at this stock and going, now the stock price is halved. Is this now an opportunity to go buy the stock? So just to put it into perspective how low this has gone down now, the last time Delta Airlines was at $24 was back in October 2013. It's trading at a P of three, which is quite low. Now, obviously that's not had the reese what's going to happen with the new earnings where it's probably come out that the eps is going to be negative but at the moment it still has a pe of three which is extremely low for any of you guys that don't really know p ratios a free p is extremely low now it was paying a dividend yield of six well nearly seven percent that has unfortunately been cut which we'll talk about in a second and the p ratio is the lowest since 2014. in 2014 there was a little bit of a tax benefit that really made the eps amazing in 2014 so it's actually probably like if you take the tax benefit out it's probably the lowest p for a very long time now when we take a look at the revenue the revenue is quite healthy in delta airlines they increase the revenue by about three billion every year which is fantastic the only little red flag that i did see when i'm looking into this company is that the profit is hardly increasing so that's a little bit worrying that over like the last kind of four years that the profit has kind of gone in and out but it's never really increased and um, i'd like to see with the revenue increasing the profit increasing which really helps the company now obviously the eps has kind of grown and that's because of a lot of share buybacks that have happened in the company and the thing about this as well about the profit not growing and the one thing that does worry me about this kind of space is just how competitive it is i think there's not really much loyalty in the airline space so you know when Personally, when I'm looking for a flight, I'm not looking at like a brand. I'm kind of looking at which suits my time better and which is the better price, which is kind of worrying for Delta because like there's no loyalty in this sort of sector. There's a lot of companies, there's a lot of competitors. And that's kind of one of the worrying thing that I see is like the amount of profit in this company isn't growing. Now, according to Simply Wall Street, it does say it's 51% undervalued. And I will tend to agree at these sort of prices. I'll kind of give my overview at the end, but I have to say that uh, well, a lot of these analysts are kind of saying it's undervalued. I have to agree that I do believe it is quite undervalued at these prices with this massive pullback. Future growth wise, it is expected at the moment to get back to normal or increasing the EPS and revenue back again in 2022. So it looks like the next two years are kind of going to be a, a rebuilding phase for Delta after this and kind of get that profitability back and that revenue growth back. And it will need that for the bailout that we'll talk about in a second because it'll have to pay back that government loan for, to really attract those investors back in the company and eps future wise it is looking that it will be probably a negative eps year this year obviously this is why the, the cruise companies the airlines are so talked about it's this coronavirus is really affecting them and it's really affecting the operations and the the companies that are really going to be hit on their like eps front now let's get on to the balance sheet so the balance sheet wasn't a bad balance sheet for a, an airline there was about 2.9 billion in cash and 10.8 billion in debt i have to say the debt has slightly increased since 2017 but overall the balance sheet wasn't a bad balance sheet for an airline because there is a lot of debt on there because it is not cheap to uh, buy and operate a lot of these planes so a lot of like leisure companies do tend to take on a lot of uh, debt and not have the greatest balance sheet but you would have said previously having 2.9 billion in cash isn't too bad but taking that into consideration there's at no point you would really think that we would have a pandemic that would pretty much stop mostly all of the travel um so obviously 
it doesn't really matter how much cash you have in a balance sheet when you're not kind of bringing any money in at all. And this has led to Delta Airlines now go ahead and get a bailout of from the government. Now the benefit with this is it looks like Delta Airlines and all the other airlines are going to be safe and um, they're going to be able to get enough money from the government. So we can't, I wouldn't put Delta Airlines at a risk of going bankrupt because it'll be able to get money from the government. Now there's a few negatives with the bailout from the government and that is that Delta has to stop share buyback which has really helped its EPS. And also it is unable to pay any dividends. Now obviously the dividend was 7%, but now it's had to cut its dividend. And the negative thing about that is it's gonna stop interest in buyers coming in just for the dividend, because obviously the only way you're gonna make money is by getting that share price back. You know, if it goes, if it's at $24, if you go up to 40, then you sell or eventually you wait and it does a return to a dividend but it is unable to pay a dividend and do its share buyback program until it pays all of its money back to the government so that's kind of one of the little negatives that is going on right now with delta airlines now when we look at insiders the big standout one is there berkshire halfway warren buffett he sells a few shares. Now I've got to say that I would not put this down as a red flag because what happens normally is Warren Buffett does not like holding over 10% in the company. He's said this publicly quite a few times and at the time of when he had sell him shares, he was holding over 10%. So that's probably the reason why he has sold out of Delta rather than he doesn't like the company or he's been put off with the company. Um, it, it's probably more from that perspective that he doesn't like holding over 10%. So overall, what's kind of my opinion with Delta and am I going to buy some shares? Now, obviously, there's a the negative that you're not going to get a dividend. And also that buyback program has been cancelled. So, you know, that increase of share price is not going to look as good. And obviously, those are two things that are going to put investors off. Now, when I think my whole investing strategy is if I buy a stock two to five years down the line, where do I see it? I'm going to make money in the stock. And I'll be honest with you, I do see upside in this company. Like I, I do feel it's undervalued at like $24. And I reckon you could probably get a, uh, a 60, 70% upside in this company uh, because it is sold off so much. But in the long term, when I want to hold the company for a two to five year spectrum, how much upside do I see from here in Delta? And I don't see that much really because I think it's just a competitive market Obviously, the buyback is going to hurt them, uh, not having that there, the dividend. And obviously, that might eventually come back. But in the long term, airline stocks have never been my favorite sort of companies anyway. You know, normally, the return you get on airline stocks is something around about what the market average is. So, you know, probably no more than 10% a year. And you don't tend to get them huge kind of gains in the company. And I'll be honest, I don't really want to invest in companies that are only giving me a 10% return each year. And it is a very competitive industry as well, uh, which really puts me off. I've got to say as well, I do have Boeing, which I like more. And I like being in the manufacturing side of it a little bit more. I, be I believe there's a lot more upside in Boeing and I do think it's slightly undervalued as well at these prices and I also have investments in Carnival Cruise which is another company that have had this government bailout and I don't want to have two new companies that are kind of like having these bailout on these problems I want to have a little bit of risk there uh, but not as much and same with Carnival there's a little bit more chance on the company going bankrupt in Carnival at the same time I think they're going to go through get through all of that and I believe there's more upside in Carnival I believe that the stock could pretty much go up 200 300 percent in a two to five year spectrum whereas i look at delta where i feel like it is undervalued and i would understand if you got in here as a little bit of a swing trade and kind of hold that for a, a 50 60 70 percent gain because i believe that's probably where the fair price is uh, but for me um after that i don't see myself having that much more upside so i'm kind of wanting to go to the area where i think i'm going to get a bit of a better return so like I say, I think Dell does have undervalued prices at these sort of uh, prices right now. But uh, long term, it's not one for me because I don't think I'll get that much of a return from Delta Airlines. So that's my opinion on Delta. I'm not going to be buying shares right now, but I do understand if you did buy them for a, a little bit of a gain because I do think it is slightly undervalued at these sort of prices. Overall, I won't be buying though because I do feel like there's some better opportunities out there in the stock market to go buy. So I'm going to save my money for them opportunities that I believe will have more upside in a two to five year spectrum. And that's the video today. Talk about Delta Airlines, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some information if you were looking into Delta. And as always, smash that like button. And I'll see you in the next video.